Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Richo Jackson uh, from the Rybra Department. Uh, my task this afternoon uh, is not quite much. I want just to help one another how we can be able to save information uh, as far as uh, academic lighting is concerned. So through in my presentation, I'll be talking about a lot of issues. One is uh, how best we can use uh, the tools for uh, correcting information. And also, I also mentioned about how sure we can be the credibility of the information that we have used in our writing. How can we trust that information? So in so doing, I'll be providing some of notable sources of how to, we can use to come up with the better literature. And in my presentation, it's not one man show. It's not like I know much about uh, the subject area. Both of you, I'm urging you to concentrate. And also, you can be making the comments through the process so that we can be moving together. So, as all, as all we know that uh, the world is moving digital, there are a lot of, uh, nowadays to get information, it's not a big task as it used to be in the past 10 to 15 years ago. For, for example, Google claims that 3, 3 billion web pages, more than 20,000 full text journals, are online newspapers, database book, books, company web pages, they can be available at the same time. That is 3 billion web pages at a time. So you can even see that uh, now information is easy to find out, which uh, poses a question, how, trust, how can we be able to trust this information? How can we know that this information that we are using uh, is perfect or is really important or relevant to the subject area. So the aim of this um, session with you is uh, try to help one another so that we can at least understand the importance of uh, academic research. We can also learn where to find academic resources and how best we can develop strategies for evaluating and organizing the information that we have retrieved. So to understand the concept better, maybe others can be wondering what uh, academic information searching is all about. In simple, you can say that uh, is a, a research-based material intended to support education and scholarship, which may include the uh, journals, articles, academic books, conference, conference papers, thesis, and other repeatable databases. So being uh, aware or understand what academic information is all about, uh, let me drive you to some of the 
not our sources of uh, information. One, we have what you call scholarly sources. Scholarly sources, these are peer-reviewed journals, academic books, and other government maybe reports. And also, apart from scholarly sources, we have what we call non-scholarly sources. So under this category, we're talking about uh, the website, uh, we're talking about books, we're talking, we're talking about the social media, which to be sure, in normal, in normal circumstances, these sources are not reliable for academic research. Mind you, I'm talking about non-scholarly resources. The examples I'm, I'm talking about, website, books, social media, and take note that in most of the cases, these are not reliable for academic research. The other sources of information is primary sources. These are original research such as experiments, field studies, and interviews. The last category under the sources is what we call the secondary sources. So under secondary uh, sources, we are talking about interpretations or analysis of primary sources, which a good example can be the literature review of other theories and essays. Moving on. Ah, okay. Um, primary sources, these are the original research such as experiments, field studies, and interviews. While on the other hand, secondary sources, we are talking about interpretations or analysis of primary sources, like literature review or theoretical answers. And under this category also, we can include books. Thank you so much, Prof, uh, for better explanation. Okay. Now, after under the understanding these sources of information, the step two now is planning a search strategy. What is planning a search strategy all about? This is about you as a, a researcher now. You sit down and per your subject, you define your information need. That is 
you should be able to, to analyze or you should be able to come back to the objective your, of your research. What exactly are you going, are you interested in? This is very important because if you don't know your aim and objective of your research, you may end up correcting um, wrong information, wrong data, whereby by the end of the day, you can come up with the research that is not worthy supporting your topic and objectives. Now, after planning the information that you are looking for, now you sit down as a researcher. What are the sources that you are going to use? What are the sources that you are going to use? Are you going to use primary, secondary, or both? That is under planning a, a search strategy. Another area to explain more about the information need, like what I've just said, you think of uh, what exactly kind of information are you looking for? For example, um, per your research, are you looking for the qualitative data or are you looking for quantitative data? Are you going for the survey? So as a researcher, you should also think about those areas. Mind you, the aim of considering all these things is to make sure that by the end of your research, you should be in line with your objective as, as well as the title of your subject area. Actually, just to add, you remember you talked about the various uses of So we are saying according to your objectives. That is the uh, including the second groups you have, but if you put it together, if you have to come up with a problem setting, as we call it, right? So you have to learn how you are going to set for that to help you put your problem in proper context. You want to come up with the search objectives or the search for, for, for hypothesis. Mm -hmm. So in your plan, you should be able to say, how am I going to search for it to come to assist me uh, to properly articulate my properly articulate my you are searching for a literature to talk about your your ethical framework or empirical uh, uh, studies or conceptual framework. It means that uh, as you are planning, you have to Press your uh, work accordingly. Because the way you say for the literature to uh, activate your theoretical framework, it's not going to be the same way you are going to do it for coming up with a proper or social framework. The way you are going to search for literature uh, to address your problem is not going to be the same way you are going to search literature. So for each of the things that you are doing, you need to tell the truth. So that's fine, Prof. Yeah, so now after understanding that concept, the, the another critical area when searching the information also is about searching terms. What are, what is it about the searching terms? This is whereby the, the researcher also is supposed to think about his subject, what keywords and concepts is part of or related to. What am I trying to mean here is, as we all know, we are from different professionals. We can, we can be taking research all as a students, but our professionals are different. 
So the understanding of other terms from different um, professions is also different from the context that you can take it as a, a researcher. So what I'm trying to mean here, I'll give you an example of uh, um, discuss how to deal with problems caused by hypopression in Marawi as a um, research topic. Looking at this uh, research topic, we can come up with uh, more than 100 research papers, but from the different contexts. For example, someone is doing business communication, someone is doing ECD. If you can go through all these, we are supposed at first to ident identify the key keywords of your research uh, question. For example here, if you can go back to the question, they discuss how to deal with problems caused by hypopression in Marav. When we can think about the word pro problem from the context of social work and from the context of ECD, we can come up with more, more different definition. So what, why is this important to understand the keywords of the research question? This becomes very important because when you are writing or you are conducting a research, Mind you, you are, the, you are the one who is a star on that field, but you are going to present that uh, thesis to people who no, know nothing about your profession. So it's better to introduce all these key concepts to the audience so that they can be following you and understand better. So what is, it is driving us to back now, when we are coming up with the whole thesis or research objective, you will reach a point whereby you call it introduction. So under introduction is, is when you are, you are trying to introduce your project to the people so that they can be familiar with your uh, thesis from the context of your professional. That is to say, when we say problem, what are you trying to mean from your context so that people can be able to be following up um, in a manner that you can be at the same page. So this is very important to understand uh, the key concepts of your research problem to make sure that regardless of having a diversity of programs, everyone should be able to understand.
uh, interested in. So, when you come off your tripod, you should be able to have some key terms for searching uh, for the literature, which you can use. But this is a very important thing. When you have written your own research reports, other people will also want to research for your way there. They will put it uh, in there, they will publish it. Uh, they will even uh, use some key terms for searching for your way. Uh, it is recommended that in your own work, you should also provide what are the terms which others can use for, check, for searching for your own work. So this issue of uh, uh, search terms is very important. How about the tool? Select the terms you will use for searching. So then, I did not want to stay with you. Ah, don't but worry, sir. It's, it's very important. So now, after understanding how best we can uh, search the information and identifying the keywords, now let's go through some of the uh, searching engines that we can be using as students, as academicians. One, we have Google, we have Bing, we have Ask.com, we have Baidu, we have MSN. But for today, I think I'll just talk about uh, theoretically, and if things goes well, we'll also ask uh, the prof to give us time so that we can be uh, doing this practically in other time. But for those who are interested, our library is always open. You can come in on time so that you can do best about how we can do this practically. So when we are searching information, like I've just said, on the internet, there are also some principles or conditions or strategies, how best you can come up with what we are looking for. For example, we have what we call, we use like tools, we use Boolean operators, phrase and proximity searching, keyword selection, like what I've just explained, but I think I've just remained with these two, Boolean operators, phrase and proximity searching. But I think for keyword selection, I think it's clear on that one, but I'll just come back to Boolean operators and phrase proximity searching. So on Boolean searching, it uses commands such as and, or, not, negative, or positive. Why? This helps to allow the researcher to specify the search terms that are combined. And brilliant operators, they do also help to use logical operations to refine or expand your search. And narrows results by combining terms. For example, climate change and agriculture. Or broadens search by including synonyms, e.g. farming or agriculture. Not exclude certain terms, e.g. climate change, not deforestation. If you are able to understand what is happening there, you can note that one and is used when you want to narrow down the information. That means you are looking for the limited information. But if you use all, that means you are trying to expand your search of uh, sorry, something. I don't know. But it was quiet. So for another victory. Oh yeah, okay. okay. 
Zoku nega vikt. Sida mula na vikt. Zoku nega vikt. Vikt. talking about uh, how we can search the information uh, on the internet but uh, this time around using what we call elect electronic search tools and uh, in 10 minutes ago I think I did mention about there are normally three tools that are used uh, the first one I mentioned about keyword selection which I think uh, everyone is now familiar after explanation the other two tools, I was talking about Boolean operators, phrase and proximity searching. Like basically, I'm talking about uh, three tools, how we can best search uh, the information on the internet. We're talking about keyword selection as uh, two number one. Number two, phrase and proximity searching as two number two. The last one um, I'm saying is uh, Boolean operators as Point number three. Now, now let's go in details uh, about Boolean operators and phrase proximity in details. One, like I said, the aim to have what you call these Boolean uh, operators is to allow you to specify how the search terms are combined. Or in other ways, what they're trying to mean um, it's about the, the content of the information that you are looking for. For example, maybe you are doing quantitative research. It's obvious that in quantitative research, you'll be dealing with the numbers. That means the information that you'll be looking for, it cannot be much compared to a qualitative data. So this brilliant tools help you when you are doing your research. For example, if you are, your research, you have used a mixed and mixed design, which is qualitative and uh, quantitative research design is whereby when searching the information, you should be um, aware of, of what we call a billion operators, which they use uh, the commands such as and, or, not, minus, or positive. Whereby when we, you say and, that means you are trying to narrow results by combining terms, for example, climate change and agriculture. But when we, you press the command of all, that means you are trying to broaden the search by including synonymous forms, for example, farming or agriculture. But then when you are pressing the command of not, that is, you are trying to exclude some of the terms. For example, crime change, not deforestation. So what it is trying to mean here is like um, you are having two concepts. 
in, a, in your research topic. But for that particular specific search, you are, you are only concentrating in one word. You can press that uh, command node so that the other term should not appear on your research. So in, in, in conclusion about the Boolean searching, I can say not is used when you are trying to exclude one of the words from your topic. When we use and, that means we are looking for, we are, we are trying to gather not more information. That is, it best suit when we are trying to search for quantitative uh, information. It's best when you can use um, and. While or, that means it's obvious you are trying to find about the qualitative information whereby you want to gather more information per that uh, subject. Uh, the other I did mention about phrase searching, that is the tool number three. Mind you, we have Boolean operators, phrase searching, and So on phrase searching, usual is when the, the quotation marks are involved. Uh, phrase searching helps to find words in ex exact phrase and exact order. It also produces only search results that have those phrases, phrases in, in that order. It will filter all the results that have those words in them, but not in that order. Take note, removing the marks will bring all the lizards that have those words in them, not necessarily in that order. For example, University of Lilongwe. This will bring the lizards that mentions University of Lilongwe, not in that order, just because you have uh, put your uh, quotation marks. Those who are in internet, you can try with that one so that you can make it clear. Try to search for investor of wrong way without quotation marks. The result will be, we will bring results that mentions investor of wrong way in that order. But then if you try again just to put investor of Lilongwe without quotation marks, it will, it will give a lot of information about the investor, about the Lilongwe, not in that order, per your request. Have you tried that? You don't have time. <laughs> so now after understanding these tools, invest of wrong way with Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you just put university of wrong word, it will give you a lot of information about universities here in Malawi, universities, Malawi, anything about wrong. But if you put quotation marks, your women tag it will be university of wrong. So that's the difference. So the same applies. When you are writing an assignment, you just put on the internet anyhow. It's whereby the lecturers will be able to know that it's copy and paste. <laughs> so now, after knowing how to search information, now we have the information at hand. How can we evaluate that this information that we have at hand is the okay the credibility of the information one is authority after gathering that information to know the validity of that information or credibility of that information you can assess the author's expertise do they have a phd or they have a recognized expert in that field in that field for example you find out someone is writing about social work but if he or she have studied ECD you can be able to trace that uh, this information is not uh, trustworthy because that author is not from that particular field the other 
indica indicator is about publication source. Under this is the material published in a peer-reviewed journal or by a reputable academic publisher. So you'll be able to know from here in morale if someone just uh, gave you a book, I'm selling this book, you being uh, a star in uh, academicians, you'll be able, the first thing to, to, to think about is about the author of that book. Is the author familiar with that particular field? After then finding about the author, you can also think about is the publisher of this book recognized or registered? So those are two things that can help you to understand that the source that you have gathered is really important and relevant to your field. So I've talked about one author. Is the author familiar to that field? Does the author have the uh, qualities or qualified to be an author from that field? The other thing, after talking about the author, you can also think about the publish of that book. For example, here in Marawi, you can think about notable publishers here in Marawi. You can search, you can find out if that book is, is published from all those reliable uh, publishers. At least you can be able to uh, sit down and say, okay, I think I'm in long direction. The other thing is about currency. For example, you are writing a research in 2024, but you find out all the sources that you have used when coming up with that uh, project uh, within from 1950, 1960, it's obvious that information cannot be relevant up to date. So other thing that you can be thinking about, I've talked about of the author of that book, uh, the publisher, the currency. So in a kind of currency is what I'm, uh, I did mention about how late is the book? This is 2004, but in your, in, in your project, you are talking issues about 1960, 1840, something. It's obvious that uh, information cannot be relevant. No. If we, if we, we are looking for income status of people in Tanzania, and then you search for material, uh, you, you present material about the 1989, the income level was 1989, the same as Uh, 
other time I would say uh, you have to keep whatever you are reading. Don't just accept the energy. They will say, ah, is this relevant? This making sense? This correct? Because uh, who we are going to be checking for those things. The publication, the publisher, is a very, very important uh, thing for assessing. Because for academic levels, it started with the academic basis and academic. So for academic work, you must have an authentic publisher. Yeah, so now I think everyone now is uh, have an idea about how we can set information using those tools. So now at least at this level, my assumption is we're having now the information at hand. And now how best can we organize that information? Because we have just gathered information, but now the next step is to organize the information in a presentable manner. So, one, after having the information at the hand, you can use some uh, skills, I think, that you are familiar with in English, what you call note-taking and uh, citation management. So, under this, um, under note-taking, there are a lot of methods uh, that can be used according to uh, the topic of your study. We have a lot of uh, methods of note taking. We have what we call neo method, which is to organize and sympathize formation efficiently. We have also mind mapping, which helps visualize connection between ideas. So as you move on, when we're writing your project, you'll find out there are some areas on a special literature review, which is uh, under, to be specific, under what you call conceptual framework, which is about your um, independent and dependent variables, whereby uh, I think you'll be asked to at least uh, present a diagram to demonstrate your uh, dependent and independent variables. So under this, we can use uh, one of the uh, note-taking method best. We can use is what we call mind mapping, which help us to visualize the connections uh, between the ideas. Another method of uh, note taking is outright method, which is a uh, structured a way of breaking down large concepts into smaller components. This can also help you when uh, you are doing with your uh, uh, read, uh, your research in terms of uh, um, literature review. To be specific on a theoretical framework whereby there will be some theories that can best guide you to come up with the best uh, uh, the project per your um, field of study. So you'll be asked to uh, try that method. Uh, you'll be asked to use this method, what, which is called our tried method of uh, note taking. For more details, I think you can go back to your notes. Um, I'm just, uh, just uh, passing by. So on... Um, citation management you find out most of the times when you're writing a project for example you're writing uh, introduction which is chapter one under chapter one you have right the two pages but just because you're not making proper citations you you pretend like to be clever not knowing that the one who are going to go through your project is better aware is clever more than you you end up writing the whole document, then you just go somewhere and take the different list, then you put it there. So you know what the challenge they'll be facing. On the citation, you, you may put different authors. On the different list, you end up having another authors. So the best to manage this information, as, as, as the moment you have typed a, a one page of your work, it's better to make your citation. At the same time, you create your reference list so that when you make your citation, you also include that author from your list to avoid any contradictions. So this is about um, citation management. The other... Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
In fact, I will say, the moment you cite somebody in your text, Masanga will say the ABC. Take that Masanga uh, no, to the immediately and provide the full reference of the advice. Next time you say Jackson, say XYZ. The moment you mention Jackson, take that name to the references section of your paper and provide you all the reference details. The name Jackson, you wrote that, the title of the article you are citing, where was it published, and all those details should be provided. Then, to make your life easier when it comes to the publications and all the references. There are many cases where you read a paper, there are uh, 40 references cited in the paper. You go to the references section, there are only 20. Where did the others go? Excuse me, forget it. And the, apart from forgetting it, he talked about the uh, taking notes from each of those. If you have taken some notes on a particular citation, put the process citation at the bottom of that. Because sometimes when you are continuing with your work, you you might come back and but I read something about this. And this is relevant for one time when I talked about it when I was writing chapter one. But I'm in chapter four. That, that thing I think is also relevant. Where can I find it? If you don't keep those uh, references proper, you find that you are trying to search for it, you can find it. So make sure you keep the references fully. Uh, 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 Update them every time you are using uh, you are finding something. Uh, the other uh, part, also I think of uh, reminding one another, is about avoiding paragialism. So in, in academic circles, paragialism is uh, it's just academic faith, whereby you are, you are copying someone's work or ideas without proper attribution, which is a, a serious manner. How can we avoid it? It is important that each and every time you must be able to credit the original author by citing the source. This may include paraphrased material, direct quotes, ideas that are not your own. So when we say paraphrasing, what are we trying to mean? It's like uh, you're, you're relating the information in, in your own words, followed by proper citation, but without changing the idea or the meaning of the original idea or information. You relate, you understand it, you put it in your own words, but without changing the meaning. That's what we call paraphrasing in academic writing. The other option. The so, me, are you trying to mean that the writing knows that um, this person will see this is this, 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 No, the thing is. Uh, yes, exactly. You remember um, we're giving examples of making suggestions of the of taking in your cycle. And the, I was giving examples. You must have a slide that says Masangano implied. Yes. Masangano argued. Now, if you are saying implied, you are not saying exactly what he said. But the, the way you understand what he said is what you are trying to do. Then you are paraphrasing. Yeah. But when you have paraphrased, you should also uh, uh, show that the, although the language you have used is yours, the ideas are not yours, they are Masangano's idea. 
you have a massive side so that you are not the uh, abuse of stealing massacre of ideas as if they are lost. That's what he said. So the other option of, of uh, citation is what we call quotation, whereby you try to use the direct course when necessary and attribute them correct using citation styles. So these uh, citation styles, basically, it will be per the demand of that institution. So I think I don't know what we are following, but like enough, the prof is here will clarify what our university go for. They know, all right. What the citation system are we using? Yeah. 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 American Psychological Association. So let's just look to some of the consequences of plagiarism. Mm -hmm. The notable one, I think the university have some policies that are against uh, paragialism that could result in failing the grade, academic probation, or expulsion. I think Prof, you can clarify on that one. Well, in fact, what they're saying is uh, for the University of Lyon, but it's not only the University of Lyon, it's for the University of Lyon. Because the University of Lyon, you have to go to the University you are found to have used some of these ideas without the crediting the source. Your whole work can be destroyed. So you could have been conducted the research, you have made your findings, and people will just be brought the whole thing in the dust bin. Because you are my neighbor. My neighbor. My neighbor. Alex, hey. Uh, here. I'll share with you the presentation. We, we will go to the extent of what we use it. Or if you graduated from crime and you discover later on that you committed the crime of preparation, you can make it go away. Let me tell you a story. Which I heard from a colleague uh, who went to do his PhD in Italy. There, he met a well known professor. That professor was a dean of the faculty to which he was doing his PhD. Very highly reputable professor. Before this guy graduated, uh, a certain publication, uh, uh, publication said that there is this professor and found that in his thesis he had maybe a lot of quotation, but not cited the original authors of those quotations. You know what, what, what happened? The, uh, to declare him not a PhD holder, his PhD was cancelled, and the university demoted him because he would not be a professor when he doesn't have a PhD. He uh, became a simple person and a very simple person. So the issue of plagiarism is a very serious issue. Matter, which must be taken off. Uh, apart from what I've just said, apart the cited, uh, citation styles, uh, the most notable styles are three. We have APA, which stands for American Psychological Association which was primarily used in social sciences. The second one is MLA, which means for Modern Language Association, which is best used in humanities. The last one is Chicago style, popular in history and some business disciplines. So why citation is important? Citing sources accurate 
accurately is essential for academic integrity, allowing leaders to verify your source and protecting you from plagiarism. So, where to find academic information? So, you as a student, the first option that you have at hand is by visiting the university library. And the university library, like we all know, or maybe you don't know, it is in two forms. We have the physical library and electronic library. So that means this, you as students, you have two options to access these books. It's either you go for the physical books or you go for the online library. So on this uh, point number two, that is the website for the online library. If you just punch in that website, you go straight to online library. That is provided you have the uh, internet on your gadget. You go straight to online library, wherever you may be. University library being the first option and trusted one for that matter, you can also go to Google Scholar free academic search engine for scholarly articles. You can also find books and e books available through other library platforms like books, like Google Books and Open Library. Like I already said, for to understand some of these issues, it needs practical. So those who are interested, you can come in time to the library to enjoy the free service there. <laughs> so on that slide, we call it research for life. You can go there and find the journals, the articles, those are the website also. So if you can be clever enough, you're gonna be interested, you can take all those um, website. These are for journals and articles only. But if you are struggling, to get them, visit the library. I think that marks the end of the presentation. And I thought that it would be very important for us to have this presentation.
and so on, right on. And where we are having problems is there. Versus, or oh, his colleague is always there to assist in whatever you are doing. Uh, these things are 